we got? Female, late 20s, multiple stab wounds. But there's no blood on the concrete, so she was probably killed somewhere else and dumped here. Yeah, somebody's trying to put on a show. Come on, how about a little respect for the dead? Temple, call dispatch, get him out of here. Give me a tarp, come on. He's got to cut it, won't he? Because he won't stop licking it. Hey, I wouldn't want your job today. Let me see. Is that contagious? No, it's a leaking problem. He's got to cut it, won't he? Take a look, look at that. Yeah. Joe, I'm telling you, the press vultures are out there. I tried to run a few of them over. There's more coming. I was faxed over by the Times. This guy's claiming credit for the Jane Doe in the circle. Jupiter. DC's homegrown serial killer. Guy killed 11 people in 1985. All random, no pattern, black, white, male, female, from cabbies to co-eds. Then all of a sudden, the killing stopped. They getting this stuff. The autopsy hasn't even begun yet. Well, leaks from CSU. Unsubstantiated. I trust the press to leave every stone unturned, Joe. Let's go live now to Martha Anderson, standing by with an interview for us. Connie, I'm speaking with Billy Nevins, lead detective on the Jupiter case in 85. Mr. Nevins, you probably know the mind of this killer better than anyone. What signal is he sending, bleeding his victim dry? You oh, worked with Nevins before? Mr. For eight years. He's a real showboater. He loved the press, and the press loved him. In one case, he cut off the ears, and the next one, paint the toenails. But he'd always leave a mark of symbolic importance. Any good? One case. of the best. Uh, yeah. He put the details of it in his letters. This is Mark Gray's mind outside the corner's office. Just confirmed in the body of Jane Doe in the autopsy. Afternoon, everybody. All right, Jupiter is really two cases. We've got the Jane Doe, which we're working on, and then we got the cold case. 17 years. We got the opportunity to solve one of this city's oldest mysteries. This is the war room from now on. Everybody share your news, your views, and your clues. We're going to the mattresses. <laughs> Detective Paris, may I say how lovely you look. <laughs> and welcome. Go. At the time of the 85 killings, we had three principal suspects. This is what they look like now. James Matthews, Oscar Nelson, and Anderson Hess. All three drove the same auto ID'd as Jupiter. All three had connections to one or more of the victims. Jupiter Hunter picked it up on the way in. Details all the cases, the players, and the theories. Does it now? And it says in there that the chief here worked on the case. Every cop in D.C. worked on this case. All right, let's concentrate on these three fellows. Let's try to bring them in. My guess is one of them's been keeping a secret for a long, long time. Uh, Temple, Debrino, get to the morgue and find out about that autopsy report before I hear about it on the news. Have you authenticated the letter yet? Uh, it's stuck in the lab. Jack. Yeah. I, uh, I think we should bring Nevins in to consult. He knows more about the case than anyone. Am I to take your silence for a no? Joe, I was working transit in 77 in New York, and uh, me and my partner are getting some air, right? This woman runs up to us screaming that two people have been shot. We get over there, and 
The girl was already dead, but her boyfriend was still alive, so we kept giving him CPR until the medics arrived. He died in the hospital a couple hours later. There was a letter in the car from the killer. Son of Sam. And I remember how the mood in the city changed from panic to relief when the PD nabbed Berkowitz. And then all of a sudden became this uh, morbid fascination. I'm in a packed subway, and staring back at me from the front page of every newspaper in that car is Berkowitz. He's grinning. He's loving the fame. So the son of Sam Law prevents these criminals from profiting from the crimes. But the cops work in the cases. The lawyers defending these killers. It doesn't stop them from getting rich off the suffering of the victims. You know something? Now that pisses me off. Jack Nevins knows more about this case than any of us. We'd be bad cops. We don't use him as a resource. I need him. I'll vouch for him. All right. Hi, Jack. I hope that you don't mind. I told your assistant that I felt faint and I had her get me some water and then I snuck in. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you... Joyce Loniger, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I on the laundromat with a shower. You rode in on your Harley caked in mud, and I gave you your dog and your bike a fresh wash. The rider. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I am taking a break from children's books. I'm going gritty for a change, and I'm starting a crime novel. And you said that if I ever wanted a behind-the-scenes look at the cop world, that you would help. <laughs> Joyce. We're busy, and there's a big case here. Jupiter! Oh, my God. It just gives me chills knowing that he's back. So anyway, here I am. <laughs> Your shadow! <laughs> Your little shadow. Brander! I want you to meet Joyce. Joyce, this is Sergeant Phil Brander. Hello. Brander's one of our best. He'll take you on some ride-alongs, show you the ropes, you know, what real cops do, that sort of thing. Good luck. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you so much hey, for doing you're this. You're welcome. Oh, you know, I really love what you guys do. Just keeping us safe and all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it must be thrilling. Oh, it has its moments. <laughs> so, you're working the Jupiter case? Uh, no, that would be the detective department. You're not a detective? No. Lots of hinky stuff going on with your Jane Doe. Knife wounds were inflicted after death. My guess was that she was asphyxiated first, then stabbed. Knowing that, I started looking for signs of asphyxiation, specifically petechiae, tiny broken capillary blood vessels in the eye. And that's when I found this. Is that a stomach turner or what? Jupiter removed her cornea. With the skills of a surgeon. Autopsy confirmed she was stabbed after she died, which means we still don't know the cause of death. Toxicology might be able to give us an answer. Ferris, cross-check uh, all the unsolved murders in the past 17 years. See if we come up with a match. Jupiter's a woman. Based on? But they haven't been able to catch her yet. That's because women are smarter than men. I've never met a guy that I wasn't like 10 times smarter than. Oh, well, don't I suddenly feel stupid? <laughs> I'm sure you're brave. <laughs> Is this what you do? Ugh. Drive around in mind numbing circles for hours on end. It's called patrolling. Uh, so, what is this book you're writing about? Tough as Neil's female detective, who's sassy like me, and she uses her straight smarts to crack big cases. You ever cracked any big cases? I'm not a detective. Detectives crack cases. <sighs> Am I gonna have to listen to your stomach rumbling all day? I want to juice fast, it tends to upset my system. You know, I was really hoping, like, for some action and all this right along. Well, maybe if we're lucky before the day's out, someone will take a shot at you. We can check one suspect off our list. I checked the database. Oscar Nelson died two years ago. Okay, where do we stand on Matthews? 
He's been working in a print shop off Embassy Road till late last month. Same time he skipped out on his apartment, owing half a year back rent. How about Hess? We got one of our cars following him. This is Comstat. Pretty <laughs> fancy. <laughs> uh, Joe, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. We're going to catch a bastard this time, right? Well, we uh, sure as hell huh? are going to try, huh? Chief Mannion, Mr. Nutt. Chief, it's my pleasure. Just call me Billy. And it's Jack, right? Yeah. Don't let me interrupt you. Please, right. continue. Joe? The FBI said the letter was uh, mailed at Forest Heights. As we all know, Jupiter avoided detection by using public mailboxes. Now, in this two-square-mile area, we got seven mailboxes. So if we coordinate the stakeouts, we might have a good shot of catching the guy. I wouldn't even bother. Jupiter never repeats himself. Well, I think we can agree, can't we, Billy, that uh, whatever we assumed about Jupiter's behavior in the past, I didn't help catch him, right? So it's OK with you. How about some new tactics? Please. Continue with the surveillance, right? Surveillance. The letter. Billy, that uh, letter hasn't been authenticated. It's real. It's real. See these slashes here? These slashes, that's his body count. And he's got 12. He includes your Jane Doe. Yeah, I don't see how that eliminates the possibility of the copycat. The slashes. We never release that info to the public. Well, look. It's been quite a few years, right, Billy? I mean, it could have leaked out. I doubt that very much. We kept a real tight lid on this case, right, Joe? And I purposely did not allow it in my book. Now, let me show you something else. See this phrase here? As I stood over her body under the light of a despondent moon. Why is he being so descriptive? He's trying to tell us something. He's trying to give us a clue as to when his next hit's going to be. A despondent moon? Unhappy. Sad. Blue. Blue. Blue moon. When two full moons occur in the same calendar month, Ferret. And when might that be? In two nights. That's when your next kill will be. Cheryl Dolan's killed in 1985 in our Jane Doe. Found yesterday. The victims 8 and 12. So far, the only two killings that bear the most resemblance. Both young, white, both girls stabbed. You sliced off a handful of hair from one, removed the cornea from the other. Yeah, that last detail doesn't sound like your boy, does it, Bill? This kind of surgery takes a lot of time. He's got to spend hours with the body, and time means more mistakes. Jupiter's not the kind of guy that makes mistakes, is he? He's just trying to steer us in the wrong direction and lead us on a dead-end chase. It's one of these two guys, either Hess or Matthews. Yeah, well, they're in our sights. Well, then let's get a warrant and pick them both clean. There's only one day left before a blue moon. Now, first we find them, then we maybe we find the evidence, and then maybe we lock them up. I mean, how long were you a cop? I brought the ball to the one-yard line, man. You know, all you have to do is walk it in. It's Matthews or Hess. Well, thanks for the handoff, Billy. Can we be a little patient, make sure we're headed for the right end zone? Taking listeners' calls, man, you tell me your name. where do you rank you Jupiter among the most notorious out. killers of all time? We have Vance from Georgetown. Uh, I'd have to rank Jupiter. Is there any way to hurry that up? Hey, you want to see the real cop world? Well, this is the real cop world. Filling out mileage reports and paperwork. Hey, Collins, can you turn that down, please? Yeah. Hello, detective. Hi! I'm Joyce, a friend of Chief Mannion's. Like, is there any way that I could ride with you this afternoon? Uh, I'm, uh... She's trading up. There's not enough action in my dull world. The truth is, Officer Brander and I, we don't really get along. He's surly. Well, sorry, uh, Joyce, I'm on a case. Figured it was only a matter of time before the cops came around sniffing. Convinced they'd find the bodies stacked like firewood. We need some accounting of your whereabouts over the last seven days, Mr. Hess. Mr. Hess? You must be new. Be nice to answer the lady's question. I was in Florida for two weeks on vacation. I got back yesterday. Now, this is the part where he asked me to show you proof. I hear Billy Nevins is back. Tell him I said hi. And I'm still waiting for my royalty check. From his book, he had three whole chapters spinning tales about what a bloodthirsty killer I probably was. 
Key Biscayne. Mm-hmm. We're gonna need to take these, make copies. Please bring them back. <laughs> what am I saying? You're gonna do what you always do, set fire to my life. Skip the apology letter, huh? It would be helpful if you could provide us with some receipts, hotel, yeah, car yeah, rental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, Hess's alibi checks out. I faxed his photo to the manager of the hotel where he stayed. He confirmed he'd been in Florida the last two weeks. Careful. All right. Oh, yeah. You know, I think this cone thing's like interfering with his sense of smell and hearing. It's kind of like blocking radar or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. How's Matthews? What about him? Well, there's reason to believe he's still in the city. His car was ticketed in Georgetown on Tuesday. I have an APB out on the vehicle. Got a girl. Okay. Time for your pill. Hey, any idea what's up with Cujo? You're the detective. You figure it out. Hi, detective. You'll be happy to hear we've been assigned to the Jupiter case. Yeah, we're looking for this car. Oh, cool. Okay, all right. If we are going to find Jupiter, we are going to have to think like serial killers. We should stake out car washes. Car washes? Serial killers are very meticulous. Like that Anthony Hopkins. He's an actor. Forget it. Why are you still a traffic cop? I'm not a traffic cop. I'm a patrol officer. But that's still like a low man on the totem pole, right? I would want to be in on the action. I'd want to be solving the crimes. You're like a bus driver with a gun. All right, you know what? You want to think like a killer? He's going to ride in the killer seat today. that day. Hi. That's her mother there. Hi. We were so proud. I couldn't bear to erase it. Like a bit of her is preserved alive in that machine. You said this picture was taken the day she died? Yes. Do you mind if I make a copy? Sure. It was her first day working the hill as a Senate page. She uh, went out with her friends that night to celebrate. I didn't hear her come in, but I did hear a dog barking around 3 a.m. Dogs bark around her all the time. But something made me get up that night and check it out. I found her right under my bedroom window. I could hear the dogs barking, but I couldn't hear her calls for help. <sighs> Press is turning this into a damn carnival. You see this? Got a guy outside our station selling these, no vendor's license. He's going to stay with us for the night. This sort of stuff makes me crazy. You said Nevins was a good detective? Jack Nevins was a good detective. That's Jupiter stuff. City viewed him as their protector on the trail of a serial killer. The truth is, he is the guy that let Jupiter get away. How? Our blood evidence. Billy resisted the FBI's efforts to help us. He personally supervised all serology testing. He forced a rush. Blew our best hopes of catching up with Jupiter. Well, he left that out of his book, didn't he? Well, it still haunts him. I still think this is a copycat. Well, Billy thinks the letter's real. Well, that's the thing, the letter. Ferris, you know what Jupiter loved to do? He loved to tell us how many times he shot his victim, where he shot the victim, when the bullets went into the body, the exact number. He liked to describe what the victims were wearing. All the little details he provided us with to prove that he was there. Mm -hmm. Look at this. The girl in the park, she wore a blue blazer, a white shirt with buttons of oriental design, perhaps Chinese. I stabbed her eight times. By the fourth, she had stopped struggling. The last four were to make sure the job was done. Sounds like Jupiter. 
But what was the most striking thing about the Jane Doe killing? He removed her cornea. Why doesn't he tell us about that? Where are you going? We need some caffeine on this one. This, uh, this Nevin's guy, does he, uh, does he come in here? Oh, yeah, from time to time, pushing his books. Dropped off some signed copies a few days back. Lucky for me, we got a lot of Jupiter fans in here. Jupiter fans? Collectors. I, uh, I sell the uh, serial killer trading cards. Pardon me. Uh, graphic novels, comics, and, well, Nevin's book, of course. So, uh, business is good. Things are picking up. Especially with our bad boy back in action. Jack the Stripper. Killed eight prostitutes in London from 1963 to 64. Case officially unsolved. Dennis Nelson killed 15. Kept the bodies around for companionship. People collect these things. They trade serial killers for sport. This is sick. It makes me think the only way my Barry Bonds would be worth anything is if he takes a machete to the Red Sox infield. What the hell is it, Dylan? We are in pursuit of a red pickup truck and blue mailbox. See him on the wheel. He's out there, Sporto. My license. Ronald Rasmussen. Got a tip the letter was dropped in Forest Heights. Why is he stealing mailboxes? He sells them online. Advertised as used by Jupiter. In fact, he has a whole list of things for sale. Bag of dirt from John Wayne Gacy's crawl space will set you back 150. In case you're curious. Run a background check. Call the feds. Let's put this fool out of business. By measuring the internal consistencies of the grayscale, I'm able to render a 3D image. And what I'm looking for are signs of tracing. And here we go. You can see where the pen marks overlap. And again here and here. So the letter's a fraud? Yes, sir. We got ourselves a copycat. What Jupiter's done is monstrous, but he's not a monster. He's just a man. Yeah, he's no genius. He's no criminal mastermind. He's just a man. Killing is not that difficult. It's just a matter of choice. That's what makes catching Jupiter so difficult, his normalcy. He has a day job. He pays his bills. He probably even goes to church on a regular basis or comes to lectures like this. <laughs> I can't tell you what a what a treat it is for you to come here to see me. <laughs> no, I appreciate you taking the time. I know how busy you are. You know, the price of fame and everything. <laughs> All right. So what's no? A letter. The Jupiter letter. The fraud. Impossible. The slashes. Yeah, the slashes. I mean. Who would know about that, right? There's a few reporters on the on the case, plus the cops working the case. Look, if you don't trust my judgment, you find another expert. Well, <laughs> you know, that's what I did. That's that's how I know the Jupiter letter was traced. Mr. Nevins, do you mind? Not at all. Thanks. So, are you a uh, student of criminology? Pre-med, but I've, I'm hooked on mysteries. I always have been. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks a lot. All right, so what you're saying is we have a copycat. 
No, I don't think it's a copycat. I mean, 17 years after the original crime. I mean, how many copycats you know are history buffs? They're zeitgeist killers, spur of the moment. So he's watching all of this, right? And he's getting off on it. I mean, you, you know how seductive news cameras can be. Oh, you're confusing me. You're telling me you don't think it's Jupiter. You don't think it's copycat. So what did the poor girl do, stab herself to death? No, I don't know. I mean, it's like this is a Jupiter aficionado or something. No, he's back. He's back. If anything, he retraced the letter to mislead us. All I know is he's promised to kill by tomorrow night. I got to keep that from happening. I've been chasing him for 17 years. I was once right where you are now, seeing phantoms and all the shadows. Anything I can do to help you, Jack, you let me know. Forever. You ever see that old black and white movie about a detective investigating a murder, falls in love with a dead girl's portrait? She fought back. She had Jupiter's blood under her nails. That's how close they came to getting her. Only they had DNA testing back then. Laura. The movie's called Laura, in case you're interested. Where's the locket? See, she wore the locket to work that day. She didn't change before she went home. So where's the locket? The locket was never vouchered into evidence, so we're thinking that maybe Jupiter took it. Then again, maybe a grieving father did. My wife passed in 98. She kept it hidden with her jewelry. I never knew she took it off Cheryl. I didn't think it mattered anymore. We know she fought hard, Mel. Drew Jupiter's blood. Can you pull DNA off of this? No, oh, it's hard to say. Uh, most of what we're looking at here is just rust. Vegas odds. Vegas odds? Uh, five to one that we can use any of this stuff. Do the best you can. How are we standing on Matthews? You got every cop in the city looking for a 92 Blue Taurus. If you release this information to the general public, let's say you make the next news cycle, you'll have a lot more eyes on the prize. No. You put pressure Listen on to me. him. You'll Listen to me. No. There will be no mistakes this time. From back here, your head looks like a melon with a Quaker beard. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that my smart-ass detective character might say. <laughs> what? Welcome to the mean streets of D.C. You know, what's that saying? Like, there's a thousand naked stories in the city. Well, I'm sure that you're going to stumble on one. <laughs> hey, hey, Chief, what is that, a fashion statement? No, I've got a licking problem, though. Oh. You know, I had a mini cocker once. Lived to be 22 years old. Boy, isn't that something? Yeah, well, actually, if you ask me, it's five years too long. Little scamp developed diabetes. That led to cornea surgery. And that led to a whole lot of diaper changes. More than I can remember. You had a cornea transplant? Yeah, what are you going to do? We yeah. learned to love these expensive little bastards. The cornea came from an organ donor, right? Yeah, that's the way these things usually work, Chief. Yeah. Sabrina, check with John Adams University's donor program, see if they're missing any bodies. Our donor program has many safeguards in place. A body operated on by our students isn't simply discarded. 
We'd still like to see your records count for all recent donations. That's a real pain. Our copy machine's busted. I'd have to use the machine in administration. Boy, that does sound like a pain. I'll be back. Did you hear that? Yeah. Where the hell did he go? Open the door! This guy's taking stupid to new heights. We're gonna need a crowbar or something. Or, or, or. From Joyce, you left her stranded in the middle of the city alone. She's scared. Well, she's wearing a bulletproof vest, sir. I, I'm sorry, sir. It's just that she's such a pill. And I mean, you must know. I'm guessing that's why you dumped her on me. Uh, well, if I ask somebody to do me a favor, I expect them to do it. You know how grateful I am when people do the favors I ask them to do. I'm happy to help out, Chief. You got two choices, Brando. You can babysit Cujo or the annoying lady. What's it gonna be? Uh, I'm not too good with dogs, sir. Okay. I expected more from you, Phil. Yeah. He admitted selling our Jane Doe to a guy. Contacted him by email, specifying a fresh body not yet embalmed. Cash was delivered in advance. Body was left in the alley. He ID who hired him? No, but he did ID the vehicle, hauled the body away, a 99 Yukon. Well, Nevins drives a Yukon. Saw it on the news. You know, Nevins was peddling his books a block from the mail drop the day the letter was sent. Hey, Chief. Our Jane Doe, her parents live in South Dakota. Their description matches a missing persons report. She was a Georgetown undergrad, Autopsy says she died of a pulmonary embolism. What? Her body was sold and then taken from a med school donor program and put into an SUV, which happens to match the same description as Nevin's car. He staged all of this, caused a citywide panic to do what? Sell a few more books? Well, that's what it's starting to look like, General. For an update on all that's been happening over the past 24 hours, let's turn to our Jupiter expert, Billy Nevins, who's been working hand-in-hand -hand with the NPD in tracking down this elusive serial killer. Billy, what's the latest with Jupiter? Well, I'm happy to announce there's been a breakthrough in a case. A locket belonging to his eighth victim, Cheryl Dolans, has surfaced. Detective Paris? Yeah. He's standing down on the Jupiter case. Nevins faked the killings. He faked the letter. It was all a hoax. All those old wounds? Reopen for no good reason? Yeah, head on back. We'll regroup. Yes, sir. I'm just going to return Mr. Hess's photos to him first. The suspect is very short. In my opinion, it shouldn't be difficult to make a match. I predict that we have Jupiter under arrest within 48 hours. Hello? Jupiter. that Hess's car is disabled and he's going to be looking for a replacement. 
The guy's a mechanic. He can steal any car he wants. Keep trading vehicles till he's half a world away. Nevins wrote that Hess once used his brother, Donald, as an alibi that he lied to protect him. First, what do we have on Donald Hess? It's the brother's house, gas station, third and Astor. What's third and Astor? Auto junkyard. Good a place as any to store a second car. shoot him and he wanted you to kill him. Suicide by a cop, if Tess dies, the mystery of Jupiter dies with him. You denied him what he wanted most, lasting fame. Of course, we will get his 15 minutes. Good job. Oh, back in my day, we had a German Shepherd for a mascot. That's not to say that your boy isn't intimidating in his own right. Gonna be more than a slap on the wrist, Billy. You're gonna go away for quite a while. I never stopped being a cop. When that case went cold, I remember reading in a paper that Oscar Nelson died, and I said to myself, one of our prime suspects has lived his whole life unpunished. 17 years, and I can remember the name of every single one of the dead. Ask somebody just to name one victim for Jupiter. He's more famous in this town than the planet. I thought, I thought if I let word of the necklace slip, it'd put some pressure on him. Maybe, maybe flush him out at the last minute. Yeah. You nearly got one of my detectives killed in the process. No, wait a minute. What are you saying? Hess. Hess. All right. Let's cut a deal. No deals. You know, I'll do anything you want, Jack. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You want me to sign a confession? You never stop being a cop. You stop being a cop the day you mutilated that young girl. I just had her parents in here to ID their daughter's body. Jane Doe. She had a name. You know her name? You know the name of every victim. What's her name? You got respect for the dead? I don't buy any of it. <sighs> Joe. Joe, I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry. Good evening. It's over. Yes, sir. Hey. Uh, look, I'm sorry I dumped you. Okay, I might have been a bit out of line. The truth is, I'm a little sensitive about my job right now, and you managed to push buttons. You don't like being a cop? Um, I love it. But by now, I'd hope to be a detective. You know, like your characters cracking the big cases. I just came up short on the exam. 
sorry. Is that, is that your book? Yeah. It's just some thoughts. Yeah. Pretty boring thoughts, actually. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking coming out to D.C. I'm not a crime novelist. I write children's books. Yeah, well, I've never read your work, but I can tell you you're going to nail the sassy part of your sassy detective. <laughs> you think? I know. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Let's make a pact. I'll keep after my detective badge, and you keep plugging away at your novel. And whoever gets there first throws back a hand to help you out. Come on. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> you brought sweet to me very much. Hey, you know, I, I was shot in the chest once. Point blank. Right there. Thankfully, I was wearing one of these babies. I mean, if you're ever interested in hearing the story, are you okay? Mm. Mm. Policing Washington, D.C. is no easy task. The District, omnibus tomorrow on CBS Action. But stay tuned, because up next, David Kill Bill Carradine stars as an ass-kicking, crime-busting Shaolin priest. Captain Sims finds herself back in 1977 as Kung Fu, the legend continues.